Okay, today I'm going to show you how you can drill your own bowling ball at home with the proper pitches um, using a jig that I've created. Um, I built it out of two brake rotors, some black plumber's um, pipe, black iron pipe used for gas lines, and some um, pipe clamps. Uh, you can buy these clamps at Harbor Freight for I think six dollars a piece um, or you can get better ones online for about fifteen or or whatever but let me show you how it works okay here's what I did here's a smaller brake rotor off an airplane just to, sh to show you so I don't have to hold up something so heavy I took the brake rotor and I cut with an angle grinder all around here and I cut the top this part off the reason I did that you can see it right here is you'll see when I put the ball in this is where the drill bit will go through that hole if you didn't cut that out of the way it would be in the way I also used an inner tube some spray adhesive and made a rubber gasket so the ball won't get scratched and so it'll grab the ball nice and tight I took the piece that I cut off from here sliced it in half with an angle grinder and I welded it onto the, the um, bottom part of this brake rotor. I left this part on, I didn't cut it off. And I did that so I would have an attachment point to weld the pipes. Otherwise the um, ball is wider than the rotor, it wouldn't have worked. Now these brake rotors came off of a Toyota Avalon. Um, depending on what size brake rotors you have access to, you may have to do things a little differently. Let me put a ball in it and I'll show you. Okay, so we have our bowling ball in the jig. You place the top onto the jig. You rotate the clamps into place and you clamp it down. Now it doesn't matter if this top is level, you just, you just tighten it. Um, all, its only purpose is to hold the ball in place. You get it nice and snug. Now you've got a ball that you can put into a drill press and it won't move but you don't have your pitches. The pitches are important. Um, I've been drilling my own equipment for years using a pro shop, what I, which I was lucky enough to have access to. And I thought to myself, how could I um, make the pitches work at home uh, on a drill press? Well, I, I took a square. It's um, marked off in inches, um, eighths of an inch, um, sixteenths of an inch, whatever you need, you can buy a square like that. Um, I'm showing you this here in the kitchen because the light is good. In the shop it's dark, but I will go drill a ball and I'll show you that I can get the pitches exactly right with this. But basically what I will do is I will put a plug cutter in the drill press, center the ball so it's exactly in the center of the plug cutter, and then I will set the square on the platform of the drill press I will clamp it in place. Then, for me personally, the pitches that I use, I bowl thumbless and I need zero um, forward and reverse and three eighths left and right for my two finger holes. So using the marks on here, I will slide the jig three eighths of an inch using the marks then I will clamp the jig in place. So this will be clamped separately than this. Once it's clamped in place, that will have moved the drill bit three-eighths of an inch over, which is how you work the pitches. And so I will do that on this side, I will do it on that side. All right, so I'm gonna head over to the shop and I'll show you how I do this. It's a little dark in the shop, so I just wanted you to see here how it was all made. Okay, so I have the ball on the drill press. I need to line up the plug cutter so that it is flush with the top of the ball 360 degrees around. So I'll do that right now. Okay, and to show you what I mean by that, when the when the plug cutter is touching, it is exactly lined up with the ball this direction, this direction, and every direction in between. 
When I get to that point, I will clamp the um, ball in place. So now the ball cannot move. I will double check, make sure that I haven't moved it. And I did just move it. Okay, the ball is clamped exactly in the center using the plug cutter to line it up. Now I will take the square and clamp it into place so that I can always come right back to the exact center. There, and that's held in there real sturdy. Okay, now the next thing I need to do is remove the clamps and I'm doing a 3 8 inch pitch so I'm going to move the ball. All right. In order for it to show up on the camera, I put some yellow post-its and um, put a mark to show you. And I'm going to move three eighths. I will move the top black mark three eighths that direction. And um, what I'm going to do, if I move the ball to the left, then the pitch in the hole will go to the right. So I will go ahead and move that and show you. And now, hopefully you can see, I have moved three-eighths. And here with the tape measure, I can verify the ball has been moved three-eighths of an inch. Now I have the jig securely clamped in place. There is a three-eighths inch gap on this side, um, which I have verified everything is clamped solidly. I need to line the ball up. and I need to clamp it in place. So I will put the top on the jig, but I will not clamp it until I line the, the ball up. So I'll put in my bit. And I will line it up. Now I drilled two stage holes, so I have a one and one thirty second bit that I go in for the first quarter inch. And then I have a 31, 30 second. I go the rest of the way and put my inserts in. It's just how I like to do it. I've done a million experiments over the years, and I've gotten to where I know pretty much what I want to do. All right. So I'll line my bit up on my lines. And I'm not um, sure if you can see the yellow lines, but. I am lined up in the proper place. So I will clamp the top on. So now when I check, I use a razor blade to line up my bit. It's just how I've always done it. I can see that I am lined up exactly the right way. I'm going to drill in a quarter inch, then I'll swap out the bits and put in my 31 30 second. Okay, now with my 31 30 second bit, I'll drill down to the depth of the insert. And there we go, I've got the depth perfect, the insert is ready. Now I need to drill the other hole. Now if I had different pitches, I could move the entire jig, putting the square on the other side, but because I'm doing 3 eighths one direction and 3 eighths the other direction, I, um, I'm just going to take the ball out, rotate it, and um, put the other hole on the other side. It'll be 3 eighths the other way. So I'll go ahead and do that now.
And there we have it. I will take them over and put them on a um, pitch gauge to verify, but um, it, the holes did not intersect. I can see they're going in just the way that they look like they should. I'll verify it with the pitch gauge, but um, seems to have worked. Okay, I remember at my friend's house using his pitch gauge to check the pitches. Um, left to right, it looks like it's right at 3 eighths. I'll check the other side. And that's 3 eighths right there. A little, pretty close. It's off by a fourth of a sixteenth. It's very close. And um, I'll check the forward and reverse. Right. When I check the forward and reverse, it looks like I'm a, about a sixteenth off um, to forward on one finger, so it'll probably be a sixteenth forward on the other. Um, there you go. So I'm like a sixteenth off forward on one and, and reverse on the other. Um, not bad. All right. Well, here you have it. I drilled my own bowling ball at home. The pitches left to right are pretty much right on the money, 3 8 3 8 Front to back, they're each off by about a sixteenth, which is pretty darn close. I think if I practiced a little more, I could get to where I was exactly right on the money every time. Anyway, um, for just a few dollars, about forty dollars in parts, I made myself a jig and I drilled my ball at home. Hope this is useful. Thanks. Alright, here's some final thoughts on this project. First thing is, um, I didn't need to clamp the ball in place before I clamped the square ruler in place. The reason I did that was, this was a free ball I got that it had a hole drilled in it incorrectly, and I had to plug that hole and cut the plug down, and so I was cutting the plug down. I cut that part of the video out because it's just getting, it was, I didn't want the video to be too long. So um, if I were just drilling a ball, I would set the ball in place and clamp the ruler and then move the ball. Um, secondly, when I clamped the ruler down, I only used one clamp. In the future, I'm going to use two clamps to hold it. I think the reason the forward and reverse were off a tiny bit was the ruler must have moved. So um, in the future, I will use two clamps. Third, on the cost, um, to build this cost me about $40. The pipe clamps, I paid about $15 a piece. I bought them at my hardware store. Um, I know you can get them online cheaper, and like I said, Harbor Freight has really cheap ones, but I just got what was on hand, and the pipe that I used cost um, $10, give or take. I got a lot of things for free like the brake rotors and the inner tube. I had the spray adhesive sitting on my shelf and a friend of mine um, had a welder and helped me with that. And so, um, you know, basically I got a lot of stuff for free. One thing you have to have if you're going to do this is the plug cutter. At Innovative Bowling, um, Innovative.com, InnovativeBowling.com, I'm not sure what it's called. Uh, you can buy a plug cutter. You have to buy one. It costs $137. It's really expensive. And they have high quality drill bits. I paid about $40 for each of those bits. So between my plug cutter and my bits, I paid $217. Um, I drill a lot of bowling balls. I do a lot of experiments. I figure all this stuff will pay for itself. If I drill, I probably drill or repair at least three, four, five balls a year. So this is gonna pay for itself real quickly. Um, but those are just some thoughts to consider. Anyway, I wouldn't recommend this to somebody that doesn't understand how uh, Pro Shops Drill Press works the pitches. Um, but if you're brave and you wanna give it a try, um, this was fun. Um, hope this was useful to somebody, thanks.